G'day YouTube, what's going on? Ditchy here with another blade review. Today we're looking at the CRKT M21 12G, which I'll probably refer to just as the M21, just to shorten the mouthful that CRKT seem to love designating their blades with. Now this one um, is the, uh, as I say, the M21 with VEF serrations. We'll get some specs and things out of the way first. First of all, it is the 2011 model with G10, which is medium texture. It's not super, super grippy, but it does provide more than enough grip. It is China-made, so if you're not into Chinese-made blades, then this is probably not the one for you. You need to skip on. Average price is around about uh, anywhere from $24 to $45, depending on where you shop and shipping. Uh, overall length is 7.25 inches, closed. It is 4.25 inches. Blade length is 3 inches. It is, and this is one of the hits, 0.12 of an inch thick, which is quite thick for a marketed EDC blade. The other hit, which is the weight. The weight of this thing is 3.8 ounces. That's hefty. But that, uh, the construction of it is very solid, so that definitely does add to its weight. Uh, blade steel is 8CR14MOV, so the next one up from the 13MOV, with a Rockwell hardness of 48 to 49. The blade finish is titanium nitride with a hollow grind. Now, in the close-ups, which you'll, I'll do in a minute, uh, you'll see that there is some wear and tear on the uh, finish. I've had this for about six weeks put it through some hard use and testing and it uh, it definitely does wear off but it adds to a bit of a cool factor with it now for the big mouthful which is the description that CRKT give the blade shape so big breath and here we go it is a deep bellied spear point swedge recurved blade with VEF serrations wow say that when you're drunk as I say, the uh, handle is G10. It, ha it is a liner lock with steel liners, uh, stainless steel liners, which are made out of 2CR13, so you shouldn't have any problems with uh, rusting. It is partially skeletonized. I don't know if it's picking it up just in there. Just on this side, this side is skeletonized. This side is not due to the liner lock. It does have uh, auto lock, which some people love or hate. Uh, it is deployed with the Carson, pardon me, I just bumped the tripod, Carson flipper as you can see there. Makes for very, very quick deployment. Also due to the fact that it does have bronze phosphorus washing, washers with Teflon as well. Uh, now for the main part, which is the reason I actually bought this blade, is for those VEF serrations. Now they are designed by Tom VEF. They're angled and scalloped. Hopefully the camera will pick up that. They, to me, are some of the best serrations you can get. I'm not a huge fan of serrations, combo edges on blades, but these ones are just beautiful. Now, I'm not sure if it's picking it up or not, but you can see that the tips on those are not exactly high up or rigid. They're not real sharp and pointy, which is what I like, because real sharp pointy ones tend to break, chip, all sorts of good stuff. These ones are very nice and shallow but have an excellent large cutting area. Now the way he's designed this is, is with the scallops that the material feeds into the scallop section, hits the cutting edge and gets sliced. Uh, overall, for the price, quite an excellent blade. I mean its direct competitors in that price bracket will probably be the legendary Skyline and also just as legendary Wat. Wat. What the hell's a wet? A wet, a wet rat? Rat one by Ontario. Uh, I don't believe the Skyline does come in serrations. The rat one does, but I really don't like Ontario's serrations that they do. The only other company I really like is Kershaw. Kershaw do some absolutely gorgeous serrations, but uh, they tend to be a little bit exy. Uh, we'll do some close up shots in a moment and we'll also do some cutting tests. Actually, I'll get the cutting tests out of the way now. Bear with me. Okay, 
First of all, we'll do some cutting tests with the uh, good old paracord, just concentrating on the belly. Now, I've had this for about six weeks with some reasonably hard use using it to cut zip ties, cardboard boxes, paper, just usual sort of everyday tasks that you would use it for, just on the belly side of it there. Very nice clean cut. We'll go the uh, double loop. Try and do this quick so it's not too boring for you guys. Oh, coordination. Why is it as soon as you turn a camera on, your coordination goes out the window? <laughs> well, it does for me anyway. Okay, again, just the belly. Oh, that's operator error more than anything else. Yep, that's operator error. I can't quite get it. There we go. But it does cut it. Now we'll go the serration side. Believe me, it does cut double power cord quite easily. It's only until I turn the camera on that it won't show it. Now, as you can see, hopefully, that the material will feed into those individual scallops and then get sliced. Beautiful. And we'll go for the double loop. Hopefully this is showing up for you guys. Again, straight through it. Quite good clean cuts. Good old paper test. Just with the belly. As I say, six week use. I haven't touched it up or anything. That's not too bad at all. Now we'll try it with the serration. Ah, if I can get it. There we go. Just with the serration only. Oh, operator error. There we go. Now as you can see, those individual scallops with the leading edge, very sharp. Has no problem cutting that. Good old UPS cardboard. Again, just with the serrations. Loves it. Absolutely loves it. The belly. Hardly any difference between the belly and the actual serration. So, to me, that's an excellent job by CRKT. Uh, well worth the money as far as I'm concerned. Well worth the money. Alright, provide some more close-up shots for you. Okay, here we are back with the close-up. Now as you can see from those VEF serrations there, that just makes the blade look so sexy in my opinion. Beautiful deep scallops. As you can see from this side, the points are not real big which to me is excellent. You don't want big jagged points that are going to catch on everything. Now, they were designed by Tom Veth. Yes, Tom Veth. God, I forgot his first name. Uh, now, his design philosophy is, is that the scalloping feeds the material into the actual sharpened edges in here and the point, which then cuts the material. Sorry about the sunlight being on it. I am outside, as you can probably see. But uh, they are just probably the best serrations I've ever seen. I'm not a huge fan of serrations. Um, these VEF serrations and Kershaw's, they're about the only serrations I really like. But uh, to me, these ones are the best. I just love the shape. Big belly there, obviously, as you can see for EDC tasks. You can see your skeletonizing within the uh, blade there. Now, as I say, there is one hit for me. I don't know if you can see it, just there. See how the uh, liner has been scalloped to be allowed easy access, but the G10 hasn't. Now, I'm not sure if that's the case on all of them or if this is just a, a fault in this particular blade, but it does make it that little bit more difficult to activate because your thumb pretty much rides over that and it only just catches the uh, jimping on the serration, uh, on the liner. So that's a little hit for me as far as quality goes. I'm pretty sure that's meant to be milled out. Also, I forgot to mention, it does have the auto lock system, which means you have to pull this back. You have to pull that back before you can actually bring the liner down. It's supposed to turn it into a supposed fixed blade, but uh, of course with a fold you never trust it to be an axe and you use it as a fixed blade. Some people love it, some people hate it. I'm a bit meh on it. I think it's just an extra feature that's not really required. 
but uh, that is part of the blade. Just a bit more of an overview there for you so you can see the back sides. Now, for me, the cost on this was around about the $35, uh, $30 mark, I believe. So it is a, as far as I'm concerned, a pretty high value EDC blade. Um, can it be used in emergency defence? Well, a kitchen knife can be used in emergency defence as far as I'm concerned, but uh, it does have that flipper come down as basically a finger guard or finger chaw. It does provide good traction. There is jimping on the top as well as on the flipper and the liner, so it does provide good lockup in your hand. Very good lockup actually. So for thrusting movements, it wouldn't be a problem. Really good belly for slicing. And as I say, if you were to tear someone open with that, uh, you would tear someone open with those serrations. They really would make a mess. But uh, for me, it is just a sexy, sexy blade. Heavy, thick, but overall, for the money, it's well worth it just for them serrations. Oh, this sunlight's giving me the... there we go. Just sexy. Alright, let's have a look at some competitors with it. As I've already mentioned, it's uh, probably pretty much its direct competitors being the Skyline and Rat One, not Wat One. Oh, I can't speak today. <laughs> I'll just give it a quick overview. A um, couple of things I did miss. The uh, it does have thumb studs, but they're more blade stops more than anything else. These ones here, you can use them to open the blade, but it is quite a slow deployment. It is, uh, pivot point is a flathead screw, which makes it excellent for uh, if you happen to be out in the field and need to tighten that pivot point up, no need to take torques bit with you. Uh, speaking of uh, tightening it up, blade centering is pretty much spot on from the factory, no need for adjustment there. Uh, pocket clip is two positional, tip up, tip down, right hand side only, south paws miss out yet again which is a very common theme with blade makers. I don't understand why they can't make it left hand carry as well as right hand, except maybe for the pivot point here, that's understandable. Uh, as I say, major hits for me are the weight at 3.8 ounces and the thickness. Skyline eats it alive for thinness versus thickness. Um, as I say, it is very comparable to a Rat 1, but the Rat 1 is bigger and more utilitarian. But uh, as I say, it can it's it's marketed as an EDC blade, but you could use it in, in emergency defence situations. It's got the finger chaw, jimping. It's, uh, so a kitchen knife can be used as a bloody emergency defence weapon if required. But overall, an excellent blade, reasonably high value. As I say, they're anywhere from twenty-four to uh, forty-five dollars, depending on where you shop. And uh, for me, the big winner of these VEF serrations. They are just make the blades so sexy. I just I really do love those serrations. And as I say, I'm not a huge serration guy. So I do recommend it. Um, but as I say, China made, so if you're not into that, give it a skip. Pocket clips only on the right hand side. Quality control oh lock up, sorry, I did forget to mention lock up is excellent. There is no blade pay up or down side to side. Excellent lockup. Quality of control can be a little bit iffy, as I say, because it, I do believe that those should be milled out, that G10, to match the liner, because it does make it a little bit difficult to get to that. So uh, weight, thickness, right hand side only pocket clip, and a little bit of QC on the uh, G10, but otherwise, for the value and price, excellent. Do recommend it, especially if you do like serration combo edges. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this wasn't too boring for you as all. Any questions, comments, please feel free to post. Best wishes to everyone. Take care. And remember, go out and get veffed.